Okay, my outstanding friends, have I got a treat for me. <laughs> and hopefully it'll be a treat for you. Everybody's talking about black holes. Black hole this, black hole that. Nobody knows what a black hole is in the first place, and they don't even know what an electron is. I'm serious. They have no idea what's inside of an atom. I'm going to go through this stuff with you, but the Russians did some research 10 years ago, and I watched it very carefully, and they actually did find a black hole, and I will show it to you right here. Whoops. There's the black hole. They found this in space. And I'll explain to you just what happened. And they couldn't figure it out, and I, I don't think they ever did. They said during the experiment, we contacted the Earth guys who couldn't believe it either. It was just like, and I guess one guy locked himself in his room for three weeks, freaked out. How did this happen? These are charged particles. I'm going to go through this with you because... Like I say, I looked at this very carefully when they did it, and I did understand they found a black hole. They don't understand that the particles can separate between the black and the white particles that make up everything. They are the source of everything. It's dipole electron flood theory. And I will show this. It's, it's very hard to dismiss this if you pay attention to it. And if you're interested in this stuff, you have to pay attention to it because it changes everything. Literally changes everything. If you don't know what matter is made out of, you can see observational things and and understand, you know, through observation, this happens when that happens, and this happens if that happens. Well, yes. What's the foundation of everything? That's the key. That's where I go, and that's where the black hole sits. And it's attached to a white, it's a black ball attached to a white ball. That's what everything is. Okay, I claim that is a black hole, and that was found by the Russians in 2015 or 2014, I can't remember which. Um, this video goes back 10 years ago, and it's uh, got the English subtitles. It's in Russian, and when I show you this, it will stun you, absolutely stun you. And they, they said during the experiment, we contacted the Earth guys who couldn't believe it either. They couldn't believe what they found, and, and, and I don't believe they understand it yet. I do, because I understand dipole electron flood theory. There's black and there's white. You see this? This is all that exists. There's a black ball and there's a white ball. And when they come together, they form what's called a Dirac neutrino. 1839 of this, of these together, all in a ball, make up what we call a proton. However, the black separates from the white and goes to the center. That's what I just showed you the Russians did. Okay, everything there is is made of atoms. Every atom is made of electrons and muons in balls. Okay, the smallest atom is hydrogen and it has about 1839 packed together in a ball. And that ball looks like this. The black goes to the center. I never knew that would, could happen, but I have seen it happen. You'll see it right now. All right, you see this? This is the atom smashers where they crash them together and they spew out a whole bunch of little particles, but they can't see the black part because it doesn't emit any light. It doesn't absorb, basically, and it, it doesn't reflect. So it's in there, but they just don't realize. All they can see is the glowy parts. And these are the ones that are the photons and the, the, the electrons in different phases of energy. And then you have the big one, big chunks like this. They call it X particles. This is basically a particle zoo. They don't realize it. But when they slam those two particles together like this, bam. They're shattering almost like glass because they really have this and they hit and everything just goes flying everywhere And so they Search and pick out what they can find and they see these same smallest particles the actual smallest ones Are the smallest of all of these is the muon and the electron neutrino Now the only way you can see these 
Okay, they know these are the smallest particles that exist, and the two of them back to back make up this, which is a Dirac neutrino. This is backwards. All the matter is here, and this is the energy. So the matter, this, this is, there's really no matter here whatsoever. And I'm, I'm almost no matter. There's got to be something there. But it's, it's so small that they almost can't calculate. I mean, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. I think there's like four micrograms of white energy, which is the electricity, in a battery in a car, which weighs like 900 pounds or more, sometimes up to 2,000 pounds. And there's only about four micrograms, that's four thousandths of a gram out of, say, 1,500 pounds. And that's electricity. Electricity has no weight whatsoever, none, zero. Well, it, it, that kind of weight, four micrograms versus 900 pounds of battery. You could drive all day long, charge your car up, it never changes weight. Drive it all day where it's empty, still weighs the same thing you started, it never changes weight. That's electricity, has no weight. That's the electricity. So, and another way to look at it is these, the electricity is charged particles. The black is a particle. And those particles here in the Russians, they all ball together in the center. And the charged ones surrounded them because they put charges on like micron-sized dust. And in a vacuum chamber, they let it come in and it, you know what, we're going to go that through that whole video because it's fabulous. Oh, it was exciting, very exciting. And every single comment was like, wow, you Russians are really something. And they are. They do fabulous research. I don't care what you say about them. I don't like what they're doing in Ukraine, but they do fabulous research. Okay, I want you to look at this carefully. This is the universe. This was taken by a friend of mine, Mason, who has a Newtonian telescope, and he's doing some really fancy stuff. He's got some special attachments and so forth that allows him to stack and layer and see the universe for what it is. Now, I do the dipole electron flow theory. It means they're black and white. You see that? That's a dipole. They're all dipoles. Where you see dark, then you're going to see bright white. Where you see dark, you're going to see white. And they're usually attached in a field similar to this. You see that? They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Some of them are a little different than other ones. But basically, this is the black and the white. And this one here, you can see how they're sort of globbed together. So, in other words, dipoles don't have to be little tiny things. They can be huge clusters of matter in a dipole configuration, and that's all I have found. And this is kind of new special technology to see these things. Look at that. You see that? You see that? that I mean, these are dipoles. There's just no way to get around it. No way to deny that. The whole thing is dipoles. Now, again, there's bigger clusters and there's smaller clusters. Now, we're going to go into the Russian experiments in space, in a vacuum chamber, using charged particles. All right, if you've been following me, you've seen this many times, but in the interest of simplicity, these are the two particles that all of the major colliders have found. A black one with a glowy edge around it, and then a glowy one that gets big and small. It has no mass, and that has all the mass. We found exactly the same thing in our light experiments. That's the black one with the glowy stuff around it here, and this is the white one. They get big and they get small. It depends on how how much impact is happening to the leading ones. There's upspin and downspin. That will charge up and it'll flip and this one will come forward. And then that will be upspin. Right now it's downspin. We can accelerate those light particles, which is not allowed in the standard model. Oh no, no, you can't do that. Yes, we can and we did. And not only that, we separated the black particle from the white particle, which is exactly what they do at CERN 
and Fermi Lab and all the other huge colliders. But they're starting with gigantic particles, so they really didn't know what they're doing, basically. Don't forget, I showed this, I believe. Here it is. They're just making big globs of stuff. They're seeing the particles. They just don't know what they're seeing. We know exactly what we're seeing because that's what we started with was light. Light is back-to-back -back dipoles. Half of that, just a black and a white, is a single dipole, which equates to heat. All right? It's not, it's not electricity. It's heat. All right? Now, and it has mass. Electricity has no mass. You fill your car up with, if you have an electric car, you fill it up right to the top, it never changes weight. You drive it all day long, it never changes weight. Fill it back up again, it never changes weight. It's, there is no, there's no mass to the white particle, to speak of. I think I've already made this, but I, I, I looked into it, and it, they claim that they can see approximately four micrograms, which is almost like a couple of grains of salt, change when they fill up a 900 or 1,000 pound battery for a car. They fill it up and it, it, it just doesn't change. I mean, it's imperceptible. They say it changes four tenths, four thousandths of a gram. You're never going to be able to measure that. So for all practical purposes, the white has no mass whatsoever. So here's where it gets really mysterious. We've got all the mass. We've got no mass. If we tune the Venturi, Venturi correctly, we can push the white through the Venturi and leave the black behind. And that's what happened. All right, it's accelerating due to the Venturi effect. It's well known, you're pushing too much stuff through a fine nozzle and it sprays out just like a hose. It's almost exactly the same. It accelerates that light, which was a nice roundish wave. Zip! and the particle goes flying right out of it faster than the speed of light and crashes here at the Venturi. All right, that's the Venturi right there. When that light hits here, the black backs off and the white comes through. Now, it's got to be tuned correctly to do this. But when that happens, all you have is the white, which has no mass. This is what you want to put in your car. This has no mass. We've separated. That's what generation is. That's what electrical generation is, to separate the white from the black. We did that simply using this Venturi. This is an electric generator. Now, not only that, it forces the white come out the back with fields. They have fields. There's no mass there to speak of. The black is not coming through. We can tune this so the black and the white come out at the same time. The black will come around this way and make a field pushing the white. And that may be necessary in outer space to drive. You may need that mass because this is the only thing that has mass. This has no mass whatsoever. Well, like I said, four thousands of a gram in a thousand pounds. That's just no mass. So we have two ways to go here. We got to consider what's going to happen in space when we shoot this out the back of the spacecraft. What's going to happen? Is that going to push the white push stuff or do you have to have black to push stuff? That's the question. You see this one? Th this one is tuned so that it, it accelerates it like crazy, yes. But it also lets some of the black come through that Venturi. And that black is pushing this white ahead of it. So this is literally what happens in an atomic bomb. This explodes. When it does, all the white that was surrounding the black, the black is in the center explodes, all the white goes out first. That has the energy but no mass. Then comes the black 
and it smashes everything down. That's how an atomic bomb works.